in our first exploration of using simple shapes and geometric forms to create a design, we made the little automobile, the little sports car or Jeep, however you want to call it. But uh, I like to do animals, so what I did was I quickly started to take a look at all the my favorite uh, animals and I started to do the same thing as, as was uh, done with the car, which was to uh, identify those simple geometric forms and then recombine them and start to create simple designs of my favorite animals. So I'm going to move the little automobile out of the way and we're going to start on one of my favorites, which was um, an animal which you also should quickly be able to identify as we start to put the forms together. So let's take a look at what we have here. We have a again a rectangle shape. We have four cylinders and you can see none of these are really well developed. They're just crude, uh, just general shapes that suggest those particular geometric forms. And then we have another sphere here, or a little ball, a little bit larger. And then we have another kind of rectangular shape here, a smaller one. And then we have little balls, one here, and then four over here of different sizes. So let me start to combine these real fast. And then once we do that, then I'll move you a little further along with the design by showing you how to morph these simple geometric forms to create more complex geometric forms and also give you more detail in whatever animal you're trying to create. So let me start with pudding. Since it's an animal, we're going to have four legs. And you can see I'm putting the one cylinder on the back there. I'm going to call this the back part, or it can be the front. It doesn't really matter at this stage because everything's just like if I put one on the other end, we have very similar shape in the front or the back, or the front or the back, however you want to call it. And then I'm going to put the other two over here. And another one on here. And for now, we're just going to kind of keep them at the same positioning where they are here. And so already you can see we have the body of an animal and we have four legs. And the next stage is I'm going to put the head onto the body. And now the head is going to be connected. The head's going to be this little uh, rectangular shape. And I'm going to put it on here by taking this larger ball and kind of pushing it together like that, uh, like that. And immediately you might say, well, gee, this is starting to look like maybe a horse. And you might be actually right. It, it might actually be a horse, but it's not going to be. And I'll give you a hint that it is actually an animal that is close, or not closely, but it is related to the horse. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those little cylinders that, uh, that I put on to the, um, the rectangle and I'm going to fuse them together like this. Once again, we're using our hands. <clears throat> as the major tool to take the simple geometric shapes and make them into a more complex geometric shape. Back and the front and then I'm just going to take my finger here where the ball was uh, put to form the neck and I'm going to fuse that down into this part here. Now, every time you do a sculpture or play with clay however you want, and I actually prefer the term playing with the clay at this stage, because what you want to do is have fun. And what you're attempting to do is to get a get greater understanding of how the simple geometric forms work together to create a more complex shape or design. 
and let's put on a tail, which I took that little sphere that I had lying here, and I'm rolling it out first into a cylinder, then kind of making a, a snake-like shape, but at the end I'm going to make a little bulbous or widened or fatter little teardrop end, but still connected to the rest. If you can see that little part there, I'll shape it a little better so that you can see that there's actually kind of a, a little bulbed end there. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to put that on the end here to form a little tail. All right. <coughs> And we're going to smooth some of this clay from the head back down, which you'll, you'll see starts to morph and shape. And you're almost losing the uh, sense that this was originally a sphere that we started with. Now it's looking a lot more like a cylinder, which is also a, a shape that you can, can use in order to create that neck. Uh, some people can use a rectangle. There's a lot of different shapes you can use. But you have to learn to um, take those shapes and use your fingers to morph them. I don't like to ever put pressure on myself to create a masterpiece when I'm just working simply like this. What my main interest is, is to explore how these simple geometric forms relate to one another uh, in the formation of the overall design, and in this case, an animal. Now, I'm going to put on, take these little balls here, the two that are very similar in size, equal proportion, relatively equal proportion, and I'm going to flatten them in a little bit more oblong way, and I'm going to give a, a little bit of a pointing to one end, and then I'm going to pinch pinch the other end together and shape like that and it kind of looks like a a leaf but in this case it's going to be an ear and I'm going to take that and I'm going to put that on where the ear would go on this animal like that if you can see See the way I've kind of fused it right into the top of the head there. And now I'm going to do the same, duplicate that shape for the other side. Flatten it out like that. Again, I'm going to pinch the one end down, and then I'm going to shape with my fingers, making it more leaf-like or in this case, what we're going to have is another ear. Okay, do you see that? Well, do you want to make a guess at what this is at this point? Like I gave you a hint, and it is actually related to a horse. Somebody might say, well, it must be a donkey. But I'm going to put one more geometric form which, which will absolutely give you the idea of what animal we're starting to create here. So I'm going to take this larger ball here. See there's two little remaining simple geometric forms. And this ball I'm going to form a long cone with. Like that. Okay. Make it a little bit more slender there. Okay, so you see that little simple cone? Roll it out. Just create it just simply by rolling the one end back and forth in your fingers, like that. And then we're going to take that little form, which is going to be a horn. And by now everybody should be able to guess what creature we're trying to create here. And again, I'm going to use my fingers, not a tool other than my fingers, to fuse that simple form, simple cone, 
into a horn and I'm going to move it a little bit forward on the head there, push it a little forward and I'm going to bend it a little bit to create the curvature that a rhino has on its horn like that. Okay, and then the African rhinos usually have a second smaller horn just above the first larger horn and we're going to fuse that into place like that. Okay, and it's a little hard to get your <clears throat> finger in there but to the best of your ability try to get that other horn put in there. Okay, so there we are. Now you can see those simple geometric forms, cylinders, spheres, and the first original larger shape was a, a loosely sh uh, formed rectangle. But there you have a simple rhino. Now, <clears throat> what I recommend if you want to go beyond this stage and start to explore some of the more complex forms that um, a rhino has, I would suggest that you go to Google or get a book on animals, um, look up a rhino, and print out a picture or cut out a picture and have it at your workstation and start to look at it and then look back at your sculpture and start to put together more shapes on your rhino that makes it much more realistic if that's dire the direction you want to go. Um, it doesn't really matter <clears throat> in the long run um, what you want to achieve as far as whether it's to be a realistic or, uh, or, or non-realistic sculpture, abstracts. Um, uh, the key thing is that, that uh, you learn to identify the forms that you're going to use, the geometric forms, and that you feel comfortable creating them. And when you create a design, it's exactly what you wanted to. That, that always helps. Uh, sometimes you can create shapes that are accidental and they look really great, but um, uh, you know, that's the kind of thing that you can explore on your own.